Welcome to this session which looks at uh, hearing the call. We're following a book which is aimed at people who are from a younger age bracket, but in honestly, this has everything to do with everyone. And whatever kind of calling we're thinking about, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a call to priesthood for us to uh, enjoy understanding some more expressions of what does it mean for us in our own life. And sometimes when we think about our call, we can be really caught up with everything which is um, exciting and is going to be good. And this session is particularly balancing our expectations with what happens when our calling takes us into areas of life where things do not go according to our plans for hopefulness at all. So let's start with three uh, examples of that. One might be someone who really feels called to be a foster carer, to make a, a difference for a child who's looked after for their life. Another calling that people uh, can be brought into is to a licensed ministry, like being a priest, where you're going to change the way things happen in the church to, to bring more uh, flourishing there. Or maybe it's somebody who feels called to be a volunteer in a local community project, wants to make a real difference for people who are in their area. So three people starting with really good expectations that things are going to be great. But we have to be careful when we imagine that everything has to be perfect for it to be right, or everything has to be just so before we realize that God's blessing is with us. And the person who's going to help us examine these ideas is the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, because he was uh, invited to come and operate in the political scene and in the, uh, the people themselves in a very up and down time in history, a real challenging time, and failure just surrounded him. So the introduction to this session is to look at that idea of what we think perfection is going to be and I'm going to argue that perfection is only something that we can take seriously when it involves failure in its own understanding it kind of incorporates rather than eliminates imperfection and when we're able to have that more balanced view then we're able to understand a bit better of how I can do my best and what hopes and expectations I have so let's go to the character of Isaiah and if you want to read it for yourself then it's Isaiah chapter 6 where he has this great experience of God full of power and majesty and glory. The sense of meeting with God is so enormous that uh, the robe that God is portrayed in, the hem of it is all flowing around and filling the temple. There are angelic beings who are uh, exalting God in holiness and in mystery and the whole place is resounding with the sound of praise. And then you have uh, Isaiah who's having that connection with God, a deep inner experience and it causes Isaiah to say, here I am, send me. So at this point in Isaiah's calling, what is going to happen next? So this is put really well in a quote from the book. And uh, the author's quote is Eugene Peterson, who uh, developed the Message Bible. As Isaiah is pulled into the holy life and finds himself involved in holy work, he is at the same time told that nothing much is going to come of it. He is to be a preacher but a conspicuously unsuccessful preacher. He is going to preach with incredible power and eloquence and people are going to go to sleep in the middle of his sermons. It will turn out that he will have access to King Ahaz, to be an insider to the operations of the state and will have wise and godly counsel ignored. The end result of a lifetime of God-ordained and God-blessed preaching is that the country will be utterly destroyed and utterly desolate. But there is more to the stumps of wood which is all that's going to be left of the people. 
that is more to the stump than anyone supposes. And here's a quote from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot shall come out from the stock of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of its roots. In the midst of uh, a message of everything is going to be tough, God's hand is there. So I wonder if you have thought about the context of your call with the added realistic dimensions of uh, failure and frustration or disappointment. Because it's always good to know that God doesn't call us to a dream where everything is Disney perfect, but God calls us to a, a reality. And when things are not right, God is there to sustain. So Isaiah is a great encourager for us in times when we do feel, well, what is going on now? I thought things were going to be so much more uplifting. I thought the benefits of my calling would have meant that life would have been easier. So there's lots of encouragements that we can see in somebody like Isaiah. And when we go through some of the material, that's attributed to Isaiah, listen to these words which are here for our inspiration and our encouragement. They're verses, they're all taken out of context, we're not doing any close Bible study, but just hear that God would speak to us with the same understanding, compassion, the same come on go for it, that he is speaking through Isaiah, not just to Isaiah, but the people of God at his time. Isaiah's word, here I am, send me. And God says, though your mother may forget you, I have engraved your name on my hands and I will never forget you. God says, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. Those who trust in the Lord shall rise up like eagles and soar. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will call and God will say, here I am for you. Trust in the Lord and do not be afraid. God says, I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news. And the Lord, my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. <coughs> my dog. When we think about what God is doing in our life, we should always stop and um, I wonder what might be going on. And depending on our temperament, depending on our background and our experience, different things will have different effects on us. If I go back to those three people who were talked about at the beginning, what happens for somebody who feels really called to be a, a foster carer, then something happens during that process and they get falsely accused of behaving inappropriately and everything crashes down. What happens for a priest who feels really called to make a change in church but whatever's on her mind she, she isn't able to communicate it in a way that the congregations can understand and there's a brick wall that comes between her and the people and there's no way of moving forward. What happens for that person volunteering in a community project wanting to make a real difference for people around them and for some reason the funding gets just pulled and the project has to close. You know when we are called up in life and gathered into what God's plan is Isaiah gives us a real encouragement to always look to God's provision for us because God is in charge of the details, the past, the present, and the future. It's interesting when you look at the words from Isaiah 
that we had in chapter 6 and see how Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the writers of those Gospels, all take them up. Each one of them quotes Isaiah in the words of Jesus, who says, you know, people are going to, um, to hear me, but they're never going to listen to what's going on. People are going to find out what I'm saying, but they're just not going to get it. And Matthew, Mark, Luke and John all repeat that as a way of just remembering that God's plan is a perfect plan, but the scenario in which that plan is worked out is full of everyday drama and everyday life. And as we think about what God is calling us into, that calling exists in the real world. And so the challenge always is, is to find that ability to be really robust and to be resilient and to be strong. Those are all popular words we use at the moment in our acts of calling. We don't find them just from our own nature, but we go back to the God who calls. And when God called Isaiah, he put in place that security, knowing that Isaiah could be protected under God's care. So Isaiah knew that God is powerful and mighty and holy. Jesus knew that and wanted to share with people the intimacy of God who is like a great Heavenly Father. When we put together our expression of God, then be encouraged that what God is calling you into, for you to have an idea of it being perfect, you need to integrate into that, not describe a way of being called that is so distant from things going wrong that it becomes a, an ideal that is never going to really exist but something that's gritty with human life just like Jesus stepped into the human life our calling is about stepping in to where God has got us and Isaiah says this brilliant prayer when he just says here I am my hands are, are, are empty but I am here how interesting it is then that later in Isaiah um, the words are recorded of, of God kind of coming back. I read them out before, here they are. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will call and God will say, here am I. So may God bless you in all of your exploring of what God is saying to you at this moment. And when difficult days come, or when life feels hard, remember the blessing, the peace and the strength that God will bring over you. Amen.